1991. Oh, yes. Oh, man. Oh. Nobody's climbed the aggro crag yet. Mm -hmm. uh, Nickelodeon's running. Salute your shorts. So and many beautiful colors like so this. So many colors. Everywhere you went. The colors yeah. they don't even have anymore. Right. They even change it. Simpsons Season 2 had just finished and some games started coming out. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be rocking every Simpsons game ever in the 90s, starting with 1991. But why not start with 1990? Because there weren't any in 1990, you idiot. Yeah, you dummy. Ugh. The first 1991 Simpsons game we're gonna talk about is of course the arcade game. From the animated intro sequence to the multiplayer functionality to the fact that it was made by Konami, it is just a love letter to anyone that liked the first season and a half of The Simpsons. Everybody remembers The Simpsons arcade game. You ask anybody and they're like, oh my goodness, I remember shoving quarters into that thing, playing with my friends. It was just a great multiplayer beat-em-up in a market that was already really crowded with beat-em-ups. This game became a staple of your quintessential 90s arcade. Of course, you have Afterburner, you have the X-Men beat-em-up game, you have Golden Axe, you have the Neo Geo stuff, you have NBA Jam, but to be an arcade in the 90s without a Simpsons cabinet, you're just goofing off. You're just effing around at that point. That's not an arcade. We thought we'd even try the DOS version of this game just to see how that held up. And it's a little jittery, the colors aren't as vibrant, uh, the hit detection isn't quite on par, but it's a solid enough game that the translation to DOS survived. It's still a good option for playing this game and its multiplayer. Here we have Bart vs. the Space Mutants. We are playing the NES version, but it was also released on the Game Gear, the Master System, and the Genesis. For the story of this game, it seems like something that was made up in about one minute. It, there are aliens attacking the Earth, and they just need to gather purple stuff. That's it. Just trying to collect purple stuff. And you're trying to get rid of the purple stuff. Now, if they're attacking a whole planet, you think they could go someplace outside of your one town to get their purple stuff that they need, but don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about any of this. You might notice that some of the aliens are cunningly disguised as humans, but only about 5% of them. The rest are just bouncing around in the street, bouncing all over the place, letting their tentacles flop everywhere they please. This game, you think just fighting the aliens, that would be what it's about? Nope, nope, just get rid of the purple stuff. So you can just cover them up with sheets, it doesn't matter. Put a sheet over it. Good enough. The gameplay of this game is essentially a platformer, but it is absurdly difficult. It's hard to move, hard to run, hard to jump, and considering all the platforming you have to do, precision platforming, there's not a lot of precision to be had here. It only lets you get hit twice. You get hit once, you're still okay. You get hit a second time, you're dead. As far as the presentation goes, it looks fine for an NES game, although you might feel like you're playing a Flintstones game because as you walk along, you keep passing the same buildings over and over. Sometimes there's a slight difference, an awning that didn't used to be there, but basically just the same two buildings, over and over and over. The Simpsons, Bart's House of Weirdness, is another Simpsons game that came out in 91, because they figured they should take the shotgun approach, because now that it was big, they should just make as many as possible, and a few of them might be good. And to be honest, there's some good to be had, Although the itchy and scratchy scene, it appears to be some sort of crucible that separates the strong from the weak who have killed themselves trying to play it. It's genuinely just chaos, and I swear the person who designed it solely did it as some sort of fuck you to the playtesters. Seriously, look at these scenes. How many more sprites could they have possibly put on the screen that are all trying to kill you? As an early example of PC Master Race, this game came out for IBM-based PCs. And as you can see, it has beautiful color, it has great resolution. Uh, to be honest, the gameplay is fairly fluid if the controls are a bit clunky. Clearly intended to be remapped to a gamepad, the big problem with this game is it's not always clear what you're supposed to be doing. What am I supposed to do on the screen with the security guard who just comes around and whacks you? 
Am I supposed to climb up the dog fence thing that only lets you climb for a couple of pixels and then kicks you off? Was that a glitch? It's hard to tell, and the game doesn't really do enough hand-holding for a game as abstract and strange as it is. But I will give the game credit, instead of endless walls of text like other games we see today, it does a show-me-don't-tell-me intro sequence. The Simpsons' Bart vs. the World, where you are traveling to the four regions of the world, according to the picture on the front of the cartridge, China, the North Pole, Egypt, and Hollywood. You start out in China. Basically, it's a bunch of ethnic stereotypes. So that's terrific. There's a, a, you're on the Great Wall of China. There's a dragon, but not really a Chinese dragon. Just, just kind of your regular fantasy dragon. You have to fight some kind of uh, offensive stereotype version of Mr. Burns called Fu Manchu Burns. You finally get through the Chinese part and you're in the second region of the world. Which country is it? Where do you think? Is it someplace in Europe or, or South America? No, it's the North Pole, your favorite country. It seems like they immediately ran out of geographical regions that they knew about since they started in China and then just immediately skipped to the North Pole. In the North Pole, you fight Mr. Burns' relative, I guess? The abominable snowman Burns? So the premise of this game is that Bart wins the opportunity to do a scavenger hunt all over the world, which seems a little odd. Is that something that they do? A scavenger hunt all over the planet Earth? If the annoying platforming wasn't frustrating enough, we also have some thrown together mini games. There's your basic card flipping game. That was something that a game designer can make very quickly and easily. Some kind of sliding puzzle. Pretty straightforward, but also tedious as hell. You'll also enjoy the quiz, a quiz of Simpsons trivia. One good thing that I can say for Bart versus the Space Mutants is that it took place in Springfield and kind of captured the aesthetic of the Simpsons. Bart vs. the World takes place in China and the North Pole and whatnot, so not so much. Aside from the fact that every boss vaguely resembles Mr. Burns, there's not a lot of Simpson-y stuff to be found in this game. Bart Simpson's Escape from Camp Deadly. I remember this game well. My dentist used to have a copy of it, so that if you were waiting, you know, you're next in line for dental work, you'd be sitting in your seat and to keep kids from fidgeting at all their equipment, they'd hand you a Game Boy and this was one of the games. And I remember the nurse would always basically give you about a minute to two minutes and then just shut it right off and be like, okay, the doctor will be in. And 20 minutes later, he'd show up. Turns out the dentistry work was far less painful than the gameplay itself. It also turns out the nurse was giving me a great favor by sparing me from the pain of this game. You'd get just enough of the platforming action to think it might go somewhere. It turns out it was just fucking terrible. Bart runs around in a bland, boring, ugly world in which random guys run at him and he throws a boomerang. You remember Bart's boomerang, don't you? Neither do I. And then Bart climbs a tree, goes up into some sort of tree fort that's absurdly high up, beats some guy who isn't a character, and then um, gets a beekeeper mask, and then the game just kind of becomes bland, more the same, and it just kind of goes off the rails. It, it, it's odd that it goes off the rails and stays bland. It's genuinely impressive. And once again, another random knockoff Burns shows up. Iron Fist Burns. Well, those were our Simpsons games for 1991. Sure were. As you can see, not only was it a great year for The Simpsons Show, it was an excellent year for games, too. Mm -hmm. Each one of those games was fantastic. No, it started off strong, but it just kept getting better and better and better and better and better and better. If these trends continue, and the, the games in 92 oh are God. going to literally 
blow my brain. Oh out. my goodness. And if you like this episode, share, support the show. If it if it does well enough, we'll go ahead and make that 1992 edition. Oh, it looks like John is still thinking about oh, it. Oh man, he's loving it. Ah, he's loving it. Stop, ah, stop look thinking. These, look at these colors. Don't, don't think ah. anymore. Thank you so much for watching the episode. If you enjoyed what you saw, feel free to subscribe. We have content like this coming out nearly every week. And if you really want to support the show, we also have a Patreon page and a brand new merch and t-shirt store on Spreadshirt.com. Links are in the description below.